We have time for questions now. We don't have time. Five minutes. Good. Only five. <laughs> Professor Kijon. This is the area I don't know, I, I cannot understand. But it's a surprise for me. Uh, the shortage of water, especially in future because of the global warming, is really a challenge for the human beings. And uh, we, we all know we have two strategies. One is mitigation, one is adaptation. I, I would like to know if there's some uh, uh, mitigation uh, to uh, got some uh, mm, proportion of the uh, to mitigate some of the shortages. The how much do you have some idea about it? Oh, 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 but could you I'm sorry. Could you repeat again and get uh, for the adaptation strategies? F for example, for the water uh, saving agriculture uh, and the water saving uh, maybe it's uh, industry. Uh, we also can solve some of the problems, yeah? Uh, do, do you have um, uh, an idea about this? And I, because I, I'm not, not the, <laughs> the person in this area. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Peter, did you, uh, uh, I didn't get honest, I mean honest, the, 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 the gist of the question. May, maybe Professor Guillon, you can ask uh, Professor Rodriguez Iturbe over lunch. Uh, the question. We have time for one intervention, okay. uh, Sir you. Andrew. Uh, thanks. I, I think uh, Chi Yong was talking about water saving technologies and what, kind oh, of, okay. uh, what kind of potential they have, but I wanted to ask another question. Um, that is, you didn't say much about the sort of quality of water, and there's quite a lot of work around salination of water. We've done work in coastal Bangladesh, for example, showing how fresh water is becoming salinated as sea level rises, and there's also salination due to irrigation. So I wonder if you could comment on how, additional to the issues of, of uh, supply, uh, the issue of quality of water uh, sure. needs to be addressed. Sure. Uh, and, and now I got to the question. I was more of a, uh, um, there are some technologies there, but there is a limit to some technology, if I understand right the question. One obvious one is desalination, OK? There have been great progress in desalination, but there are thermodynamic limits to desalination. And, uh, and, uh, and it has its own problems too. Talking about salinity, you have to dispose the, 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 the salty thing, the, the, the amount of maintenance that the salination plants have. Now, some country, Israel is a good example, Saudi Arabia is another one, go this route because, especially in the case of Saudi Arabia, it's some almost unlimited energy type of thing. I mean, this is a very, very expensive energy consuming type of operation. Irrigation, as you will point out, I didn't go purposely so because I wanted to, con to know, to confront the food and irrigation thing into quality of water. Very much so. If you expand the irrigation, you will have consequences, serious consequences in, uh, in uh, the quality of water. Not only that, but also, I mean, there's no talk also about the, it's a completely different chapter too, but in one in which, in fact, we have done quite a bit of war, which is the, 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 Drainage networks, or the river networks, if you want to call it that way, the river networks as vehicles for transmission of disease, in which things like cholera, bilharzia, etc. You know, you have an example is the, is the, is the Haiti uh, explosion of cholera some year, a couple of years, three years ago, or whatever, in which these are becoming more and more and more polluted. Same thing in, the, in, in areas of South Africa. And this, this, again, is very much linked to urban planning, you know, and to the availability of, uh, of, of uh, sewage and, and, and uh, management of, of, of sewage type of things. But that's, I avoided that. We could talk at length about, about that, but certainly, as you well point out, irrigation will bring its own consequences in terms of quality of water. Thank you so much, Professor Rodriguez Iturbe. One minute.
Secretary. One of the uh, trends, of course, is for more reliance on the U.S., Brazil, and other uh, major food exporters. Could you just say a word about how realistic that is given deforestation in Brazil, given yeah. the Ogallala Reservoir? I, I, no, it's a, it's a good point, Jeff. I was just touching upon things, okay? But uh, is this on? I think it is. Okay. Uh, Brazil has the same problem that was mentioned here several times. I mean, a lot of deforestation is taking place to produce, again, soybeans and things like that. that are, you know, the, the market is driving the thing. And even in the United States, part of that is taking place, too. Uh, the case of Argentina and Brazil is, is really amazing in the amount of hectares, thousands and thousands of hectares. In fact, as I said, some authors say that Argentina, if this continues well, will short time from now will be a monoculture type. That's amazing, a monoculture type of country. Now, can you imagine what happens if by market reasons this demand decreases? The consequence that this will have, or if somebody, powerful companies or whatever, can manipulate the cost of the product and the demand, one of the two or both of them, it will restructure the whole water trade, the whole water trade. And one of the challenges as scientists is that at this moment we don't know how much it will be changed. We know the, wa the water network is a dynamic one. We know how it has evolved from 10 years ago, five years ago, and right now. What we don't know, I cannot tell you is how we, uh, how can I predict how will it be if, for example, you reduce the demand of soybeans in China by 20%. How will that affect? Because it will not only impact Argentina and Brazil, it will impact the whole global network. And, and uh, interestingly enough, the internet is an easier network to deal than the water network. Because humans tend to be more or less, I mean, we are all different, et cetera, et cetera. But the use of these things is not that different in, in France than in Venezuela or in the United States and Argentina. We all use it, we go to Google, we go. in fact, that Facebook, I think I am a dinosaur, I don't use Facebook, but you know, has become the, the big node. That big node at this moment is the United States. That's the enormous responsibility of the United States also as a food producer, you know. We talk, the, the, the biggest flow of them all is United States, Japan. And uh, Japan doesn't have the land nor the resources to produce to be self-sustaining in food. It is extremely good in industrial type of thing. It has established this partnership, if you want to call it, with the United States and with other countries too, but the big arrow there is United States, Japan. How will that be impacted if, you know, a president decides to play the game that I'm going to reduce that arrow by 30% to put the pressure or whatever you want to call it, okay? I don't think anyone can tell you what will be the reorganization of the global trade, the virtual, virtual trade of water. And I think it's an extremely important question for policy things. And a lot of research is being carried out right now. These hidden variables that are used, just will take one second there, that drive the thing, we all know what it is, probably, you know, population, amount of people, number of population, Hydrologic reasons, rainfall, which is a multidimensional character, GDP. And these are correlated type of things and some other stuff. But if I change one arrow, 30% less in the arrow from the state to, the, to Japan, how will that impact? Because it will have an impact over the whole network. I don't know, you know, I, 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 nobody, nobody knows. On that note of uncertainty, Highly scientific, I may add. Thank you so much, Professor Rodriguez Iturri.